The following video is based on research done by Giant Panda King, as well as their book, Gotham 1919-1939, available at www.giantpandaking.com. Viewer discretion is advised. For the second episode in our deep dive series, I figured who better than the fearmonger himself, the Scarecrow. Employee at Arkham Asylum and subordinate to Hugo Strange, let's see the real history behind this character in Gotham 1919-1939. In Gotham 1919-1939, Jonathan Crane is based off of a number of actual historical figures and subjects. A fair warning. This video will cover sensitive topics from World War II, as well as chemical warfare in World War I. To kick it off, let's look at the historical figures. First up, we have Fritz Haber, a Nobel-winning German chemist. He was famous for helping to formulate the Haber-Bosch method, a process that synthesized ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen gases under high pressure. He, along with colleague Robert de Rossignol, developed this method during their time at the University of Karlsruhe. This process was what won him a Nobel Prize. As the years progressed, Haber was a known vocal supporter of the German powers rising just before World War I. He was one of many scientists who signed the Manifesto of the 93, a document proclaiming the support of the German science community for the German government and their direction. This proclamation was an attempt to sway the rest of the world in their favor, with the start of World War I, Haber worked on a specialized team in the German army, the Gas Warfare Division. It was his time here that eventually earned him the title Father of Chemical Warfare. He developed numerous gas weapons for the Germans to use and faced much criticism from the rest of the world for the death toll caused by his weapons. His response to these critics was to state that death was death by whatever means it is inflicted. In contrast to Jonathan Crane, it is easy to see the similarities between him and Fritz Haber. Scarecrow would have minimal regard for human life in the pursuit of his research and experimentation, and would have similar experience in the field of chemistry, in developing his own fear toxin. The next historical figure we'll cover in this video is Joseph Mengele. Again, a warning to anyone watching about the following information. It contains sensitive topics from World War II. Now you might be wondering, why are we covering a historical figure from World War II if Gotham 1919 to 1939 takes place before that? Well, you'll see once we get into this historical figure. Joseph Mengele was an officer of the SS and a physician during World War II. The deplorable acts he committed during the war earned him the title Angel of Death. He was responsible for overseeing the selection of victims for the gas chambers at the Auschwitz concentration camps as well as the administration of the gas itself. He helped test the deadly Zyklon B, a cyanide-based pesticide used in the Birkenau gas chambers. Whenever an epidemic broke out among the prisoners in the camp, Mengele would use it as an excuse to either kill a sick individual in order to perform an autopsy on them, or he would send an entire cell block, often Jewish individuals, to the gas chambers, ordering their cell blocks to be disinfected. He did some truly awful, evil things to these prisoners. One of Mengele's other terrible acts was his research into heredity through human experimentation. Heredity is the passing of genetic traits from parents to offspring, whether sexually or asexually. This includes eye color, hair color, and numerous other things. Heredity is also the thing that causes certain genetic traits to naturally accumulate, resulting in the evolutionary process via natural selection. Mengele's experiments took this field of research and twisted it. He drew from the pool of prisoners at his disposal, focusing on twins, people with heterochroma, two differently colored eyes, people with dwarfism, and physical abnormalities. Mengele pressured a Hungarian Jewish scientist, another prisoner, into aiding him in his experiments. This scientist stated that Mengele's fascination with twins stemmed from a desire to increase the birth rate of German citizens specifically those born with the desirable traits. Twins would be subjected to weekly examinations by Mengele. The German officer would subject one of the twins to amputation, typhus, or some other horrendous fate to observe its effect on the other twin. 
According to the Hungarian Jewish scientist, Mengele once killed 14 twins in one night in an experiment where he injected chloroform directly into their hearts. These horrifying experiments and the blatant disregard for human life are echoed by Jonathan Crane in the Gotham 1919 to 1939 universe, but not nearly as deplorably. Joseph Mengele was one of the worst people to walk the face of the earth, and the trail of bodies left in his wake is a grim reminder of the terrible things done by the Nazi party in World War II. Mengele also received a grant from the German Research Association, which he used to construct a laboratory. Even though Mengele came after the era of Gotham 1919 to 1939, the parallels in his lack of morals are evident in the Scarecrow. Something explicitly mentioned in Scarecrow's Gotham 1919 to 1939 origin is the Little Albert experiment. The purpose of the Little Albert experiment was to determine whether it was possible to instill a phobia in an otherwise normal child. The infant, nicknamed Albert, was subjected to tests in order to develop an emotional baseline for the child. Using Pavlovian theory, Albert was exposed to a rabbit, white rat, dog, monkey, various masks, and other stimuli. In interacting with these things, Albert showed no reaction of fear to any of them. After developing a baseline, the psychologists then began the next phase of the experiment. They let Albert play with the white rat for the next phase, but every time the child touched the rat, the psychologist would hit a bar of metal with a hammer, startling the child. Albert would cry and show fear. They subjected him to this numerous times. Eventually, they no longer needed the hammer and metal bar. Albert would show distress merely upon seeing the white rat. He would cry and show fear whenever near it, and even react similarly around other furry animals and objects, such as the rabbit, or one of the masks that had false hair on it. It did not extend to everything with hair or fur, but it had become a generalized response. It's very easy to see why this historical experiment would attract someone of Jonathan Crane's caliber. His obsession with fear and phobias would be in its early stages upon joining the team conducting the experiment. One of the Scarecrow's trademarks is his fear toxin. Whether in liquid or gaseous form, its ability to instill fear and terror in its victims actually has basis in history too. In the Gotham 1919-1939 universe, Scarecrow's fear toxin draws inspiration from the chemical and gas warfare mentioned earlier in the video. One such gas is chlorine gas. Also known as Bertha Light, chlorine gas was used in World War I along with numerous other gases. Chlorine gas was especially deadly as it reacts with the water in the mucosa of the lungs. It forms hydrochloric acid which is extremely destructive and potentially lethal. This is the reason that chlorine gas was also used with phosgene. Phosgene is a colorless gas with an odor of fresh cut grass or hay. It was first deployed by the French in World War I. Phosgene would affect the pulmonary alveoli, resulting in a disruption of the blood air barrier. This causes pulmonary edema to set in. This is liquid accumulation in tissue and air spaces within the body. This liquid accumulation can cause hypoxemia and respiratory failure. The reason phosgene was mixed with an equal amount of chlorine gas was because phosgene is much denser. The lighter chlorine gas would help to carry the phosgene further. Another gas used in World War I was mustard gas. It was used by the Germans against the French and had been previously developed by Hans Thatcher Clark. Clark had developed his research off of the work of numerous other scientists before him. Mustard gas was especially dangerous because it could be easily absorbed through the skin. This rendered gas masks at the time obsolete. Mustard gas was not as lethal as other gases used in the Great War. It was only lethal in about 1% of cases. Mustard gas can cause discoloration of the skin, blisters, irritation, and itching. This is all because the burns are chemical in nature. The fumes can even penetrate clothing. All of these gases in some way, shape, or form inspired the Scarecrow's fear gas in Gotham 1919 to 1939. Gas warfare was very prominent in World War I, and very well could have inspired Jonathan Crane in his development of fear gas. The Scarecrow's costume has numerous bits of historical inspiration behind it. First off is the Scarecrow from The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. A common theme in this story is that the Scarecrow seems to be brainless. It's what he asks the wizard for. 
The Wizard of Oz gives him a brain made of bran, pins, and needles. In actuality, this solution is a placebo. The Scarecrow only thought he was brainless, when he was really quite intelligent. I could see this contrasting in Crane's ideation of himself. He could take this and run with it, considering himself intellectually superior to everyone else. And I mean, this look has pretty obvious parallels. Another bit of inspiration is the 1920s movie The Scarecrow, starring Buster Keaton. The movie is about a farmhand who experiences a series of unfortunate events while trying to win the love of the farmer's daughter, played by Sybil Seeley, and competing with his friend, played by Joe Roberts. Throughout the course of the film, Keaton's character crashes through windows, scrapes against brick walls, and falls into a hay thresher which tears up most of his clothing. He borrows clothing from a nearby scarecrow. This look could also provide inspiration for Jonathan Crane. Maybe he saw the movie, enjoyed it, and took it into account when creating his persona. Next up, we'll go into the materials used by Jonathan Crane to create his scarecrow outfit. The material he used was hessian burlap, commonly used to create storage bags in the 1920s. Crane would have used some of these bags, cutting them up and sewing them together into a suit. Hessian burlap originated in Jamaica and the Caribbean, and was used to make gunny sacks for coffee, tea, grains, wool, tobacco, and cotton. The material in hessian burlap is breathable, so it keeps the condensation from ruining dry goods. Hessian burlap was also used in clothing, but for varying reasons. In a religious context, hessian burlap was used for mortification of the flesh. Hair shirts worn on Ash Wednesday and at other times throughout the year. This was not the case for all religious people, but it existed nonetheless. Hessian was also used during the Great Depression when other materials were scarce. The only issue was that the burlap could cause rashes and irritation after prolonged use. This would mean that Jonathan Crane would potentially be dealing with these rashes and irritation every time he used his scarecrow outfit. Hessian burlap was also used on ghillie suits up until the Vietnam War. Its patchwork nature made excellent 3D camouflage, as well as camouflage scrim on helmets. Hessian burlap would have provided the exact look and aesthetic that Jonathan Crane desired in his Scarecrow outfit. The final historical point to cover is the parallels between Jonathan Crane and Hugo Strange, contrasted with the working relationship of Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. Jung and Freud met in Vienna in 1907. This meeting sparked a five-year friendship which eventually began to deteriorate rapidly. Let's take a look at where things went wrong. Freud was like a father figure to Jung at the start of their friendship, someone with whom he could share all of his thoughts and feelings on psychology. Freud saw Jung as fresh blood in the psychological field, someone who could revitalize it. This conclusion could very well be drawn for the relationship between Crane and Strange in Gotham 1919-1939. Where Freud and Jung's friendship began to deteriorate was in their disagreements about their field of study. Freud's stance was that most human actions are driven by the subconscious, sexual nature of an individual. Jung disagreed with this on numerous counts. Some of Jung's stances took the spiritual into account, albeit minimally, and Freud disagreed with this. These differences, among numerous others, caused their disagreements to become more and more prominent until they could no longer consider their working relationship to be friendly. This parallels Crane and Strange. Crane started off by sharing his theses and research with Hugo Strange, but over time began to communicate with him less and less. This was due to their conflicting stances on certain practices and philosophies. This led to Strange eventually giving up Crane to the authorities when the Batman came looking for him. And that wraps up our summary of the real history that inspired the Scarecrow in Gotham 1919 to 1939. If you liked this video, drop a like and let me know in the comments what other character deep dives you'd like to see. I also want to give a very special thank you to our Patreon patrons, channel members, and GoFundMe supporters for making this video and all our other ones possible. If you want to help support the channel, you can find those links in the description or click the join button below. As always, thanks for watching, and remember, the night is darkest just before the dawn, and I promise you, the dawn is coming. Have a great day, and see you in the next video.